President Biden is promising a full investigation of yet another ransomware attack by the Russian-based group Revel. This time, the hackers targeted a software company whose clients manage internet services for businesses worldwide. The supply chain attack has reportedly affected at least 200 U.S. companies and over 1 million machines globally in what appears to be the largest ransomware attack ever. The hackers are now demanding $70 million in Bitcoin in exchange for a decryptor for the infected machines. Revel is the same group, you would remember, that recently attacked Colonial Pipeline and JBS, the U.S. meat processing plant. Joining us now is Esteban Castaño, the CEO of TRM Labs, a blockchain intelligence firm that helps governments and financial institutions prevent fraud and financial crime. Welcome, Esteban. Thank you so much for having me. So, Esteban, the FBI managed to get the money back in the case of the Colonial Pipeline attack. This is, again, the very same outfit. What are law enforcement's chances of getting the funds back this time? It really depends. Um, in the in the dark side uh, example, uh, you know, the, the, there were a lot of unique circumstances um, uh, that made that operation successful. Um, I think in, in this case, um, it'll it'll depend in, in terms of, of 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 how that attack was carried out, um, the surface area of that attack, um, uh, which crypto the the ransom is paid in, and other and other factors. Um, just to zoom out on kind of a larger picture that has been larger picture question has been gripping the crypto community. So on the one hand, you have sort of like law enforcement and sort of the no coiners out there saying things like, you know, Bitcoin and crypto is terrible because it's so easy for criminals to use. Right. And then you have the sort of crypto evangelists on the other side saying like, no, it's actually not true. It's totally traceable and it's actually bad for criminals. It's much easier for criminals to use cash. Where where what's the reality here? Like, where does it fall among that spectrum? Like, is it actually a good tool for criminals or is it something that makes it harder for criminals to, to, to commit crimes. So, you know, it's a little bit of both in the, in the sense that you have this global uh, money uh, that is really uh, efficient to send internationally and that is accessible and that there are easy on ramps into it. And so on, on one hand, it's, um, it's, it's quite easy for ransomware operators to target victims, for instance, or other criminal groups to use it. On the other hand, um, it's all of the data is on a public ledger that folks um, like TRM can analyze, um, like you know, law enforcement can proactively analyze to detect and investigate financial crime. Um, a, a blockchain-based financial system, from a proactive uh, risk management uh, uh, perspective, is much safer than a uh, you know a world where transactions are by default. Um, uh, you know, uh, much more difficult to to analyze, which is the model that we have today. So, Simon, uh, centralized exchanges are, are they being helpful? To, uh, these guys as they try to liquidate their holdings, and, and are things going to get complicated as we see more and more decentralized exchanges uh, becoming a, a, a bigger factor in the market? Yeah, centralized exchanges are really helpful. Um, you know, they're they have KYC AML controls, and they help in, in two major ways. One is, you know, monitor incoming deposits and prevent proceeds of financial crime like ransomware to be converted into fiat. And the other is that, um, you know, they can help uh, link on-chain activity to off-chain activity by virtue of, of, of doing KYC. And so if, if they're able to see that, hey, you know, uh, I've got XYZ deposit and it's linked with Y individual and that deposit was associated with a ransomware attack, they can help be an important nexus for law enforcement to build cases. As crypto, um, you know, as decentralized exchange technology takes off, one of the interesting things that we're seeing is that all DeFi leads back to centralized exchanges. So we see that, you know, there's trading and there's a lot of activity happening in the with decentralized exchanges, but ultimately there needs to be a cash out into fiat um, and 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 when that happens, um, you know that's where there's KYC, there's AML, and, and ultimately law enforcement is still able to get a nexus back into the uh, the off chain world. Uh, one of the concerns that we hear sometimes is this idea that well, you know what happens when the world is truly uh, decentralized and all finance is happening in these dexes and there isn't a cash out point. Um, we don't see that um, you know uh, 
happening to kind of to that degree. I think that even in a world where you have a lot of decentralized exchanges and decentralized finance applications, um, there are still going to be bridges to the traditional financial world, where that, that's through a payment processor, through a credit card, or through other, some other vehicle that will ultimately link on-chain activity back to um, you know the, the uh, traditional financial world. So, about notwithstanding all that, um, you know, exchanges are still struggling to prove to regulators that they are compliant with regulations. We just saw the news again, China cracking down once again. Can you tell us a little bit about what TRM Labs does exactly to help them uh, address that and, and show their compliance with regulators? Sure. We are a blockchain intelligence firm. Um, so we provide B2B software that helps financial institutions detect money laundering, fraud, and financial crime. And so, you know, crypto businesses have the tools to talk to regulators and say, well, yes, this is a new financial system, but we have best in class tools to mitigate uh, the associated uh, financial crime risk. Um, it's a, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a journey for the regulatory environment to adapt to crypto. It is a brand new financial system. And a lot of the assumptions um, that we had in the old financial system are different in this new financial system. And so, um, you know, but like any new technology, we don't, uh, we shouldn't approach it to, uh, with, with a blanket, um, uh, a, a ban. We should look to understand it and look to mitigate the unique risks um, that, that are in it. 